Hi everybody, Roy here. We're at, now I'm at Millennium Park. I came down here to Chicago. It's March 8th. And it's so cool. I ran into Austin, Ishai, and Casey. Kelsey, Casey. <laughs> Sorry, Casey. And I don't know your last name. Oh, you? it's Eves. Like Eves on a house. Eves on a house. Yeah. And Casey owns a wonderful company, Vermont Gardening. Yeah. Garden. And Austin owns even a wonderful company, and it's his own company. Austin Eyeshide Garden Design. So I met one of the garden sites that was just, I think it was just turf, wasn't it? Two years ago? Uh, I think it was ground cover of lilies. Or oh, day lilies. lilies. So I thought, well, why I ran into both from here, I'd like to have them share with you what they're doing and some of the discoveries, self discoveries they had last year, self discovery, about what changed and what new things they, that came into their world and way of being as gardeners and designers. So I thought it's always interesting because we always stumble on something new every year and for me I'm the constant intern I just keep finding out new things and adding that, that value to, the, to what I practice so Austin can you share what, what's new yeah. Basically. yeah so this planting is about five years old now is the first one that kind of we undertook at the park to show what some of these spaces could turn into that were utilitarian to begin with so before it was just a big cluster of uh, daylilies planted in rows so not very interesting no winter interest bloomed for three weeks throughout the year and then they pulled out the yellow leaves which is not a lot of excitement for any amount of work there shouldn't be any extra work in such a simple basic planting so it's kind of a waste of space so it's just generally maintained as a landscape yeah 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 so now there's more dynamic there's about 11 different or like 11 to 15 different species in here and um so right now it just got cut back by Casey's crew in the last week or so. And um, uh, it's got probably like 90% of the original design here. And uh, last year we added some bulbs in for the early spring interest. And so in a few weeks here, we'll have some daffodils and some scylla coming in. But I mean, I mean, what were some of the things that didn't work out right away? Um, we first got in the regular Calamaris Blue Star was supposed to be here, but we got the Calamaris Incisa instead. So right away I noticed that the height difference, um, and so I could tell immediately uh, Blue Star is generally about a foot and a half, where the straight species is about two, two and a half foot, and that's a heavy cedar. So I knew right away that we needed to get that replaced and to the original plant. So that was one of the things. Um, and then the... Who took care of it initially? I took care of it. Yeah, the, it was just an area, my first area, so my little baby. And I thought the first, uh, you know, it, it only took about 20 minutes every spring to take care of it before it all melted together. I also had uh, Persicaria and a Stilby in here, which was a big mistake because those was like a lot of moisture. And this area, once we started planting, I found out it was a, like, a, I don't know, about a foot deep of uh, sand left over from the installation of the pavers here. So it was very dry very quickly and it would probably need to be watered once or twice a day to keep up with the water needs of the Astilbe and the Persicaria. Um, we, I replaced it with some more, I think I simplified the palette a little bit and added more of what was existing here. So I added more Galenia, uh, more Hookera, Watermelon Carnival, and uh, there's some Calamantha, Nepeta Nepeta in here. And then um, we also continued to see, here's the Calamantha, but we see, saw some areas that were continuously weedy. So then I added in the Carex albicans into those locations so that in the spring, that's going to cover the ground to suppress the weeds. And then, um, and then it'll be covered by the other perennials once everything fills in. So that will kind of limit, eliminate some of that maintenance. What, what other grasses do you have in here? Uh, we have Deschampsia, uh, yeah, so there's Deschampsia Gold Tau, which is kind of the matrix of the planting, and it kind of weaves up and down to kind of give it this flow, and those airy seed heads just give it, you know, when this, this is a dappled shade area with an alley of, uh, of honey locusts, and so that dappled sun just lets the sun hit those seed heads of the Deschampsia and just glows when you walk past it, so it's hard to not see it. I have to say it's very durable this champs yeah, it's very it's more forgiving than the, uh, the species as far as uh wet to dry conditions so it's a great plant old top yeah so since there's more shade here if it was in full sun it would probably have a harder time living without that moisture but since there's some shade here the gold towel can withstand a little bit tougher conditions any future thoughts for changes in the garden um or are you more consumed with all the other things you have to <laughs> yeah we're stepping on to the other areas and looking at more edits there but there's definitely always you know the 
hardest areas are always the front line where the snow removal is, uh, salt, and so those are probably the areas that we're looking at and need to like maybe add more Carex. Last year I added just you know a flat or two, and we might need to add some more this year. What, what else are you doing in the park? Helping the park really go from one way of being to another as far as uh, landscape. Yeah, there's a lot of utilitarian areas that you know were around the whole park, and since Lurie Garden was such an amazing example of how uh, city parks can look, spaces can look, and be more dynamic and uh, and less maintenance than turf grass. So behind us we have the BP Bridge, and we just did that planting last year with Vivant Gardens, and um, I kind of took it off the pallet here that we had in this small space and used similar plant material, but not all of it. Um, just to kind of create a flow and um, I used large blocks and drifts to flow with the bridge and the shape of the bridge and the curves and so people can have a more enjoyable walk as they walk through this space um, that was maybe not utilized before and it gives people more of a chance to enjoy every corner of the park. You, you and Casey share together how, how you're collaborating because it's all about stewardship. Really things can go in and Austin does a great job of putting plants in, putting good relationships together, but it's about who's going to care for these relationships in presently and into the future. And I think, Casey, you yeah. can I share with you. We're coming in strengths. as part of that changeover of what Millennium's approach is with a lot of these spaces, going from something that's utilitarian that maybe gets mowed once a year with the lawnmower and not given a lot of thought or care afterwards. and watering methods that stay the same all year round to creating a more dynamic landscape and Millennium Park as we learned this past year and we're talking about is meant to be a walking gallery for the city to enjoy and so it's really exciting to get to work with Austin because now we're bringing that form of artistry into the landscape itself and showing off what can be done with native plants. Um, I'm still a little bit new to the park. We just started last June at this point. Previous to that, um, Austin was working with the maintenance crew and coming over himself quite a bit. But you've got a lot of design to do. So now we're building up the collaboration between it. When Austin comes to visit, we get to fill in a little bit more on the history of each space that we're in. And we're getting to get the front row seat to how every single plant is reacting with its space. So looking at a five-year bed here versus a first-year bed over there versus three-year beds over here, we're able to get a really good look at how these plants are developing overall and how they're playing with each other in the space. Maybe and you could uh, also talk about your what are your strengths? Because to me, your characters, your, I know some landscapers are wonderful people. Yeah. But I think you have some really good strengths that you bring to the park and the plantings too. Well, that's that very kind. Good. I mean, that's that's the goal of every gardener, right? I we are, we are not a landscaping company, we are a garden company. Our strength is in paying attention to all of the pieces of the ecosystem that surround the care and the maintenance of these plants. So it goes beyond just making sure that water is good and that weeds are down, but also tuning into how ecology is playing with the space, how the humans that are around it are playing with the space, the nutrition level of these plants and how we can get natural systems to work to support them. So um, like this last year, one of the first things that I was doing was watching the blowing patterns that were taking place in the park to see how much leaf material we were able to keep in the beds so that we can provide the ongoing nutrition without having to bring in truckloads of equipment. And gardeners are able to do that as we get in and dive deep with the personal characteristics of these plants. We're able to customize care and over the long run create a more natural process occurring in the space that creates less overhead costs, less trucks, less carbon emissions, it's really your all cost those things. Per foot can go down as the plants mature. It does. And you, and you build a relationship with them. It's yeah. the plants coming together in relationship wise, understanding each other. It takes a lot of patience and persistence to put those plans into motion. Um, we have to take notes every time that we're here in order to get them into a place so that we can pay attention to it over time. But the goal in the long run is that the gardens are starting to become their own caretakers and are less and less reliant on us to do it. Well, and you um, collaborate with Austin, so you got like a team, you got yeah. a family coming together. And Austin coming in and explaining the design principles behind what he's doing and the soil history of the space because we, we only lift a shovel in here when we have to. We don't want to be too disruptive to the soil. So getting more of that history of care before we're here is so important. Plus, Austin knows all of his plants. He knows his plants like a champ. Sometimes we feel like we're doing flashcards around him. Um, but getting that history and that knowledge from him as a designer and how it's intended to be and how the growth was anticipated helps us to give a feedback to, we're not seeing this achieved in the way that we were hoping. I think we need to augment something and we can team, we can bring a team approach to that where I can focus on the maintenance and the care and Austin can focus on the design. Um, 
That's a, that's a key number. It yes. is. And that's our future, I think, in, in open spaces, collaboration, team effort. It's happening right here at Millennium Park, which is too cool. Yeah. Yeah. Anytime there's a fire, you know, like not a real fire, <laughs> but anytime there's a plant that's not working or a group that's not working, I get a text from Casey or someone in the team saying like, hey, is there something that we can replace with this? Or, you know, is this, you know, maybe not working because we had some issues with the irrigation this year? Or, you know, so there's all these different options and then we sit and look at it and discuss and then maybe add a new replacement or add a combination plant that can fulfill those voids maybe in early spring when it needs to be the a weed mat and kind of help suppress the weeds or something yeah. yeah need to add more color in this time of year so there's just all this yeah, great dialogue back and forth and it keeps me you know I, I was living at the park almost because I'm like my babies and like nobody's caring <laughs> for my babies and now I'm so fortunate to have their team here and full trust and uh, to have this collaboration well, before we end let me ask you both a question what are you looking forward to this year what kind of things are you expecting or looking forward to or well, it's only March 8th. Yeah, it's, it's March. So obviously the thing we're most excited about right now is the bulb oh, show. Like yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, seeing seeing even the tips of them come through, walking through before the season started and before crews were here and seeing seeing the tips of what we planted just the year before. It was the first year of truly feeling like us as stewards of the space, we're making our market difference in it beyond just the care. So of course I'm excited about that. We also added over 600 perennials last year. Wow. So getting to see how the plant relationships change from that and how they settle in is, is exciting. It's being witness to nature. Yeah. That's what I like, like bulbs speak up. And for me, personally, that's where I find magic in the world. Like when a little seed germinates, it becomes a plant. So I think you're witnessing the magical moments. Yeah, and getting we're going to have such a great comparison this year. We're going to have first year bulbs. We're going to have bulbs that have been here for a long time. We're going to have first year plants that are just settling in with their first six months of roots, really, um, while we're seeing other perennials completely come in on their own. So I'm excited about it, not just from the perspective of being a gardener and loving to watch things grow and thrive, but also from what it does for us as gardeners. This is a great educational playground for myself and my team because we can see those lifespans and those changes taking place. And your knowledge and your workability you can bring into other communities too. Same Absolutely. with Austin. Austin, Austin to design beautiful gardens and take them out of Millennium Park all over the Midwest, all over the world. And that's and why, why stop it? Midwest. That's our goal. If we can be here and help tend to this space, then Austin can create more gardens, and then there can be more gardeners, and then the world just slowly transfers over into something beautiful. And so, healthy. Yes. Yeah, health and beauty all tied together. Yeah. Well, geez, I'm glad we all ran into each other. That was too good for me. <laughs> and uh, thanks, everybody. See you later. Thank you. Thanks. Happy spring. Hi, everyone. Roy here. I'm at uh, Millennium Park, and I just ran into a a really cool group of gardeners. I'm not not landscapers, really gardeners. So could you introduce yourself? You're with Vivant. Yes, my name is Annika. I work for Vivant. Yes. Hello, my name is Claire. I'm also, we're all working for Vivant. All work for yeah. Vivant. And, and I'm, I'm Julia. Can you tell me what you're doing here today? What It's, it's March 7th or 8th. It's March 8th. And what? so what are gardeners doing at Millennium Park on March? Eighth. What are you being trimmed out? The They're trim down. A, a lot of trim down of perennials so that the bulbs that are coming Okay. Out. Can you show me some of the things you're trimming? Yeah. Let's take a look at some of your activity. Okay. This is an area you went through. So you've, you've trimmed down the, the perennials in the garden. You can see the uh, Carex Pennsylvanica, I think, over here with the snowdrops coming up. So let's see what you're doing today. So we got some. Um, a still be growth from last okay. year. Okay, growing up the slope, okay. Um, and what we're doing is taking them down from the top so that the foliage can create kind of its own mulch around Excellent. the plant. So, so you're cutting them from top to bottom top and you're creating a living mulch using the stem fall and leaf fall as a mulch for the plants. Very cool. Yep. So there's no intention here to rake anything up and haul it away. Nope, that everything traditional, is a... Traditional gardeners would be doing. Maybe, maybe tossing some leaves around if we see some bulbs coming up. Uh -huh. that's, so that's can you do one same. more? Let's see you do one more. Start right. top. top to bottom. Very cool. Away. Very cool. All down. So the three of them are working their way through the garden. 
And I have to say, it looks like you're having a good time. Oh yeah, it's a beautiful night in it. It is a beautiful night. Okay, let's go over here. Claire's doing the same thing. Yes, we are. We are top, all on the trim down. Top to here. bottom. I have to say, I'm glad I took a walk through the park today and met with Casey and uh, <laughs> and Austin, who designed not these gardens, but the gardens we're going to a little later to see garden activity starting this early. And very purposeful, too, leaving the plant remains in the garden. Right, and, yeah, uh, nothing's coming. We're not carrying anything. Well, nothing's the plants have created their own mulch since they appeared on Earth. So what you're doing is just letting the plants live in this system of living they've had their whole lives, which is very cool. Okay, thanks for your time. Thank you.